Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for uh, listening and watching. And with that, I just uh, want to do a quick little announcement. Uh, Linux News Log is being moved uh, what night we publish it. Uh, previously, we were doing it Sunday nights uh, to be published early Monday morning. The problem with that is uh, I've been uh, having a fair amount of trouble actually getting uh, relatively fresh news to talk about on Sunday nights or finding relatively fresh news to talk about. So... Um, we're shuffling a couple of the shows around and decided it would be best if uh, we did Linux News Log Tuesday evenings. So the new night is Tuesday evenings. The show's not going anywhere. We're just moving what day it is. Um, and uh, so keep an eye out for it for Tuesday evenings. This will be the first time we release it on Tuesday evenings. So uh, that's that. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at uh, broadwayworld.com, Linus Torvalds has been named the recipient of the 2014 IEEE Computer Society Computer Pioneer Award. That's right. Uh, Torvalds, a native of Helsinki, Finland, began working on the Linux kernel in 1991. He's an avid computer programmer. He authored many gaming applications and, and, and he in his early years. He did his early work on an Intel 386 PCU using Minix, which is an, a Unix-inspired operating system created by Andrew Tenenbaum for use as a teaching tool. So after he did that, he formed a team of volunteers to work on the Linux kernel version 1, which was released in the spring of 1994. So anyway, uh, it goes to give a brief history of his uh, work and interesting read. But the important bit is that he uh, is receiving the Computer Pioneer Award from the uh, Society of Engineers. So pretty cool. Uh, from Market Watch, Embedded Linux Yocto Project announces AMD and Mentor Graphics as a new as new advisory board members. This is kind of interesting. The Yocto Project, for those of you who haven't heard of it. Uh, they do a lot of embedded Linux stuff. They are responsible for the uh, Minnow. Let's see, right there. You can see it right there. The uh, There we go. The Minnow. And I have the Minnow box right there. Uh, anyway, they're responsible for the Minnow. There's a variety of, uh, of uh, embedded Linux solutions that they, basically they standardize a lot of the stuff. Really interesting. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, it's nice that they get uh, hardware manufacturers on the advisory board because it helps guide them to make stuff run better, particularly on embedded hardware. From the Inquirer, I thought this was the coolest thing ever and had to share it. Uh, a Linux engineer builds a Raspberry Raspberry Pi based Pi phone for one hundred and fifty eight dollars. Um, he basically built the first smartphone based on a Raspberry Pi computer, and he's named it the Pi phone. Uh, Liz Upton of the Raspberry Pi Foundation lauded the device in a blog post on Friday, largely due to the fact that it costs just $158 to build. It's constructed entirely from off-the-shelf components, which means there's no soldering required and no fiddly electronics work, which is really awesome. So what makes this phone up uh, is a 2.8-inch, 320 x 420 TFT LCD display, courtesy of Adafruit for $35, a SIM 900 GSM GPRS module for inserting a standard SIM card, and a 2500 milliamp, milliamp hour battery priced at less than $15. So it's based on the Raspberry Pi Model B, which cost about 40 bucks, depending on where you buy it. It could be a little more, a little less, but it's about 40 bucks. And other components, such as connectors and on-off switch, all, those, all that other stuff came out to about $20. It does run custom software, um, which brings dial pad to the pint-sized screen, so the device is capable of making calls. Um, really awesome. Definitely check it out. You know, I mean, it's stuff like this and the ingenuity of stuff like this that that really 
gets me, you know, kind of brings a little tear to the eye, if you will. You know, it, it's it's like, you know, you can make off the shelf stuff. Now, is it a flagship smartphone? No. Is it going to compete, you know, with my iPhone 5S? No. Is it going to compete with a, with a flagship Android phone like the HTC One or, you know, the Samsung Galaxy S5? No, but it's still cool. And it's Linux based, which is even better or open source based, you know, it's like, come on, this is awesome. Definitely check it out. From the register, uh, Oracle melds its cloud OS with OpenStack and Solaris 11.2 release. Former Unix server customers are continuing the march toward Linux, and for many, there's no looking back, but that hasn't stopped Oracle from continuing development of Solaris Unix, even if it is a little on the slow side. So they staged an event in New York to announce Solaris 11.2. It's only the second point release of the former Sun product since Solaris 11, shipped in November 2011, the last being in 2012. So it, like I said, it's definitely been slow. Um, even though the OS is only getting a minor version bump, uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't include significant updates. According to the Solaris product director, Larry Wake, it's just that the new stuff shouldn't break any existing systems. So... Pretty interesting. Definitely check it out, especially if you're a Solaris user. You know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you definitely uh, want to look at before you upgrade, even though it technically shouldn't break anything. From Machine to Machine Magazine, over at machine to machine magazine.com, Wind River adds a security boost for Internet of Things. That's right. Uh, they are adding a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so they have announced security profile for Wind River Linux. It's a software offering certifiable to the Common Criteria General Purpose Operating System Protection Profile up to Evaluation Assurance Level 4 with increasing connectivity among devices using a well-established standards-based approach such as Common Criteria during development can help address security concerns around the Internet of Things. Additionally, Wind River has released the latest version of the carrier grade profile for Wind River Linux as a turnkey platform for customers to meet carrier grade Linux requirements, which they're mo more well known for for the carrier grade stuff. Um, we've had a, a variety of, of uh, news articles that we've talked about over the years about Wind River doing carrier grade stuff. So pretty interesting. Uh, definitely check it out. From the nextweb.com, Firefox 29, can you believe that? 29, version 29, uh, arrives with revamped sync tool, customization mode, and Mozilla's user interface overhaul, Australis. So they've officially launched Firefox 29. You can get it for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and Android. It's a massive release. Uh, Firefox sync has been revamped and is now powered by Firefox accounts. There's a new customization mode and the company's major user interface overhaul, Australis, has finally arrived. It's uh, Firefox.com is where you can go get it, so definitely go check it out. I will be looking at it myself. Um, every time a new version of Firefox or Chrome or you know one of the web browsers comes out, I, I take a look at it uh, to see if it's worthy of replacing my current favorite web browser. From PC World... Uh, Canonical's audacious Ubuntu for Android project isn't quite dead, but it is in limbo, unfortunately. The idea was audacious. Combine Android, the most popular mobile version of Linux, with Ubuntu, the leading Linux desktop operating system, on a single smartphone that swapped between the two depending on whether the, de the device was docked. Ubuntu for Android seems to have moved off the active roster as Canonical focuses on its own Ubuntu Touch project. What I really would like to see is Ubuntu Touch with Android. That would be nice. I don't necessarily want a full, or maybe, you know, and uh, Ubuntu Touch for a tablet because it's a larger screen and, and Android or Ubuntu for Android for a smaller screen. I, you know, there's a lot of use case scenarios to work out, but anyway. Pretty neat. Um, uh, and a new exchange on Ubuntu project tracking website seems to suggest that Ubuntu for Android may be dead. However, 
Uh, Matthew Paul Thomas, an interface designer for Canonical, opened a bug report on launchpad.net stating that the website describes Ubuntu for Android as a must-have feature for late 2012 high-end Android phones. Ubuntu for Android is no longer in development, so this page should be retired. And that's what's leading everybody to think that, oh my gosh, it's dead. Well, not really. Um, the author asked Canonical to comment on the status of Ubuntu for Android, and here's what they said. We're very happy with the reception of both Ubuntu 1404 LTS desktop and the early Ubuntu phone images. We think these development, developments show a desire in the marketplace for Ubuntu and an Ubuntu for Android solution would be a good way for it to reach users. We still believe that Ubuntu for Android is a great product concept and that consumers would welcome the feature. The development within Ubuntu for uh, U4A is complete. To take the development further requires a launch partner in order to make the necessary modifications on the Android side. We're currently not in concrete discussions with launch partners, but we're still very much open to such partnership. We are focused on Ubuntu for phones at the moment, therefore we are not actively pushing for Ubuntu for Android. However, if a prospective partner steps forward, we are very much open to launching Ubuntu for Android. And that was quote unquote. It's from Ubuntu uh, marketing representative Marina Angel Luvori. So, not dead, but they're not actively doing anything. Pretty interesting. So anyway, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.